Hi, welcome to part five of the Ho'oponopono book by Ulrich E. Dupree. Okay, so now we're on the section problems and conflicts. The word problem originally came from the Greek and refers to a task or a dispute. Literally translated, it means the God throws a stone before our feet. The rulers of fate and Olympus do not do this to annoy us, but to ensure that we grow because of it. Every problem is a challenge and offers a learning exercise we may grow through every challenge. Whether it is about a new colleague, a neighbour, a traffic jam, an illness, a family crisis or a hole in the savings account. People in problems that we perhaps see in our as our foes are really our best friends because they show us where we have to work. We could also say life consists of a linked sequence of tests that show us where we stand. A Ho'oponopono exercise. Please lean back a little and think of a problem that is occupying you or a good friend. Visualize this problem and search for it within yourself. What feelings come up? Breathe peacefully and be relaxed. Observe your feelings and the problem. Now say the four sentences and read the clarifications relating to each. The clarifications being in part four that I read previously. Remain an observer. Repeat the four magic sentences to yourself until a feeling of understanding and sympathy arises and give thanks. We are used to seeing our world in dual terms. We see things as simple or hard, above or below, rich or poor, black or white. It's like a coin. There's only one coin, but we see two sides. This is precisely the way we see our personal and international conflicts. We see ourselves and we see the conflict. We see a victim, perhaps ourselves, and we say the other is guilty. And by that we mean that the other owes us for spoiling our happiness. It would be interesting if we were to question those we consider culpable, those whom we make responsible for our unease, for having stolen our happiness, those who threaten us, harm us, or whom we oppose, those whom we avoid in the workplace or make way for in the street, or those who easily provoke us. If we were to ask these people why they act in this way, you would probably hear one of the following answers. I do my best and I can really can do no different. But this is what you wanted. I am a victim of society and circumstance. In other words, nearly every culprit described him or herself as a victim. Though it will be discussed later in this book, it is interesting to view the conflicts in terms of the Ho'oponopono practice of family conference. In social work and couples counselling, the participants in the conflict ask themselves directly how they have contributed to the problem. They appeal for unconditional forgiveness and grant the same themselves. No one looks for compromise but the greatest possible consensus and each meets the other on a higher spiritual plane. However, back to our metaphor, victim and culprit cancel out. They are like the two sides of a coin. If I no longer reject my illness, my colleague or my debts, but I integrate and use them as a springboard for growth and knowledge, I have made a leap towards perfection. I am reclaiming for myself the power to shape my world. Experience is not what happens to you. Experience is what you make out of what happens to you. Aldoulis Huxley we seldom have any influence over the actions of others, but we can decide what we think of them, however we feel about them and what consequences to expect. We can choose to make ourselves the prisoners of our own thoughts or to liberate ourselves and grow. The often experienced worldviews of victims is that the problem is too large and they can do nothing about it. Ho'oponopono turns this on its head because we see that the problem is close to me and on that account I have something to do about it. If I change myself, I can change something. 
I can change myself and therefore I have the power to make other changes. Please step out of the shadows and take back your power to make changes. Ho'oponopono works as a powerful tool to solve conflicts. Keep a simple trust in the power of love and forgiveness and just say, I'm sorry, please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. A little Ho'opono exercise. Lean back a little and think of a person about whom you've had some reservations. Perhaps you avoid them or you even argue with them. Feel deeply within yourself and now become aware of your strongest central feeling. Become an observer. Observe and describe this feeling as precisely as possible. Enhance it in a single word. Fear, sadness, anger. Take a deep breath and just say, just like me, this person has experienced and name the feeling. This person experiences, name the feeling just like me and I feel it with him. I am sorry. Please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. Please repeat this exercise and carefully read the clarifications of the four sentences one more time. Thank you. The clarifications are in the previous part of this session. Okay, now in the bottom of this description today, one of the, the viewers, Priya, has sent me a fabulous interview with Dr. Hugh Len. It's one of the most wonderful ones I've seen. Thank you, Priya. And I'm going to put the link down below for those of you that want to watch an extended version of hearing Dr. Hugh Len talk about this wonderful, wonderful forgiveness prayer, Ho'oponopono.